So I got parts. I got stepper driver units. I got power supplies. I've got some more motors. I've got a breakout board. I've got a smooth stepper control center. Originally, I was going to use these NEMA 34 and their 640 ounce rated stepper motors, and that was going to drive my gantries. But I'm going to use this on the Y and the Z. And I got new motors, which are these bad boys right here, because I thought, you know what? I got me uh, some 1200 ounce NEMA 34s, two of them, and that's going to drive the gantry on both sides. And I got this from a company called Automatic Te Automated Technologies. They weren't the cheapest, but I called him, I talked to him, he explained a lot of things to me, and he did a good job of upselling me, and I bought the really good power supply because I'm driving some bigger motors. I got the, um, the better control board, so I can use Mach 4 instead of Mach 3. I don't have to use a parallel cable, I can use Ethernet. Works a lot better. Mach 4 is the newest version of the uh, software for the CAD CAM and the G-code reader. So we're going to build the brackets for all these motors. I'm going to install these motors and then we're going to start wiring it. And uh, that's what's coming up. So to determine how big my controller box has to be, I took a quarter inch piece of MDF and I laid out all my components on it. This is my uh, overkill power source. This is my little 5 volt power source that runs the controller board here. That's the breakout board. And then in this bag, which is still in the static bag and I don't want to take it out, is the uh, Ethernet smooth controller, smooth stepper controller. And that's going to mount right on top of that. Got my drivers right here. These are still in boxes because I want to keep everything as dust free as possible. I put a little extra space up here. I'm going to put a divider shelf right here. And the sides will have a fan and some holes. We can get some circulation in here and keep this cool. But now at least I know how big it is and I'm going to go ahead and build my box. Here's my controller box. It's all mocked up. Nothing's permanent because I want to take it apart so I can mount all my components to the quarter inch MDF and I'll have a little more access without all the sides and the shelves in here. I'll just draw some lines all the way around here so I have an idea where it's at. I always save stuff, packing material, don't know why, but it came in handy this time because this is going to be a filter here. This is my divider and another filter. I've got a fan coming that's going to mount here, then it's going to create some circulation in here so it won't overheat. So I've got to cut a hole here and a hole here and some holes on the outside. I've got that laid out with the center marks here. So I'll probably just do some three and a half inch round hole saws, one here in the shelf. And I've got this extra space here that's going to probably be for the var variable frequency drive later on. Not sure. I always like a little extra room. So with that, I'll take this apart, gonna mount everything on there, and then we'll uh, glue it all back up. So there's my controller box. Had some extra hinges, like I say, I always keep stuff. Never knew that I would ever need them. This little latch over here, I had that from I don't know what, but I saved it, and it came in handy. So I <clears throat> mounted my controller board back here, and then the smooth stepper here and I had to use these I had to order these online these little teeny tiny Sam because that board can't sit flat on this piece of quarter inch back here so that step step it up just enough so I could mount it and then you had to use these little teeny tiny those are actually three millimeter screws to hold those boards in place Mount my drivers here after I mocked it up, the power supply, I've got all the power coming into here that runs the power supply. It also goes to this fan that I have right here. Uh, the router is going to come into here and connect to this as well. 
The, this fan here creates a circulation through all through in here and whatnot. And that's what it looks like on the outside. It's a pretty decent job. Got it all hooked up, all wired it up, plugged it in, had the wrong stepper drivers, and fried them because they weren't rated for this power source. So make sure when you do yours, get the right power source or the right stepper drivers that go with the right power source. And this is a heavy duty, super duper power source and it was more than these could handle. But never fear, I got to spend another 250 bucks and I've got the new stepper driver and they are just barely gonna fit in place here, but they're gonna fit. So I'm gonna go ahead, take these out, put these back in and then we'll get going with the rest of it. All right, I took those steppers out, the drivers, put them back exactly in the order that I had them mounted in because these here will reconnect back to those stepper drivers and they're already connected to the uh, breakout board. I connected everything to the breakout board when the breakout board was actually out, connected it and then mounted it. Really tight to get in here. I suppose you could do it, but it's kind of difficult. So I'm gonna drill some new mounting holes I'm going to mount the new ones. All the stepper drivers are mounted back in there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and rewire this just like that. You notice I labeled each one of the steppers so I wouldn't forget. What's nice about these is these little plugs come right out so you can wire them outside and then plug them in. I'm trying to get in through the sides, kind of a little bit of pain in the rear end, but I'll go ahead and wire them up and we'll plug them in. As I was saying, these are the directions that you get online. It shows you exactly how they need to be set up. So this is our completed controller box. New drivers, this uh, pretty neat spiraled wiring that I learned from my son-in-law. And I'm back. Got all the stepper driver cables going out here. Holes here from the originals when I changed the stepper drivers. These are no good, now I got them plug them so I don't get dust in here. It's all cable tied together. This here is our kill switch line, which came in really handy already. And uh, this is the ethernet connection that goes to the back of the computer. So I didn't show you how I wired all this because there's plenty of guys on the internet that you can find that are way sharper than I am. Some really good sites will show you all the wiring. And like I say, just follow the directions that come with it and it'll work really well. Um, there was one problem with the controller board and that was that it was jumped to ground when it should have been jumped to 5 volts in my setup. Your setup might be different, but none of this would work until I changed that over. And this is what it looks like when it's running, kind of like a Christmas tree. Fan's working real well. It's actually a really quiet fan. So we're good to go. So here's our final wiring. Got this cable track, runs all the way down. Loom for all my wiring that goes into the back. Was finally able to put the back panel on because I was done working in there. But all my motors and my power go through here and across to the other side to the A and it comes out the top here, goes across to that cable track. Made these brackets, can probably do something with those, make them a little fancier. Little bracket here, this little piece to hold the cable chain. So, there you go. Well, let's see if I did this right. 
caught myself code already, so here we go. darn so for all intents and purpose this thing is working and I've actually made some pieces on it cut this pattern out perfect made a little rectangle dead on accurate perfectly square the dimensions were right on to the piece that I cut but there's a few things as I use it I can tell it's tweaking out a little bit and it's not staying exactly square we have a problem here that this wants to sag and I've got this shimmed and it's good now, but it wants to sag. So I need to rebuild this whole Z axis because I can't get any brackets on the side here because I can't screw through here because of this bolt that goes down to tighten it. So we've got to redesign this and fix that. And that will keep this because it's tilting and the surfacing bit is digging in on one edge when it goes to surface so I can't surface the top of the spoil board. Um, I got to build a little bit of a better dust collection system. I'm going to go ahead and take this piece here and run it all the way through and make it solid so I can go ahead and bolt it all the way along the line rather than just right here in the e ends so I can get this thing to square up a little bit better and stay a little more solid than it is now. It's tweaking from time to time and I have to reset it quite a bit. But we still have a lot of work to do. It's functioning. I'm going to actually build the new Z-axis. Um, with the CNC. So that'll be our next project. So we'll see you again.